Hello everyone. Welcome to the course of Fundamentals of IoT, in short FIOT. In today's class, we are going to learn about data analytic techniques and technology. Okay. Generally, a cloud-based IoT analytics platform provides IoT specific analytics that reduce the time, cost, and required expertise to develop analytics rich as well as vertical IoT applications. Okay. So the main purpose of an IoT analytic is to uh, the applications are designed in such a way that the effort or the uh, process time should be reduced and the cost of the device also should be uh, reduced and it also need to fulfill the several IoT application purposes. Okay, not only that, the platforms IoT specific analytics uh, they also uh, come across insights. Like they also create new information, they monitor complex environment and also make accurate predictions and also optimize business processes as well as operations. Okay. So generally these applications of IoT with respect to big data platform can be classified into four main types. Let's see what are they. So the first one is deep understanding and insight knowledge. Second one is real-time actionable insight third one is performance optimization fourth one is proactive and predictive applications okay so these are the iot big data platform where it is uh, classified okay into several categories now these various technologies okay so there are few various technologies which allows us to uh, use for the IoT analytics platform. What are those technologies we are going to see now? First one is batch processing. Okay. So what is a batch? Batch processing supposes that the data to be treated is present in a database. Whatever the IoT data which is already present in the database, that processing can be considered as one of the batch. Okay. So generally, According to this, a batch can be considered as the data present in the database. Okay. So the most widely used tool for this particular purpose or the case is Hadoop Man Reduce. Okay. This is a tool in order to process a particular data present in the database. Okay. So this particular Man Reduce is a programming model and Hadoop an implementation allowing what these tools do means they process or processing large data sets with a parallel distributed algorithm on a cluster. Okay. So these tools, it can be a Hadoop or a man reduce, okay, uh, map reduce programming models. Okay. They uh, they helps in processing large data sets with a uh, parallel distributed algorithm present in a particular cluster cluster. Okay. So it can also run on an inexpensive hardware, which helps in lowering the cost of a particular computing cluster. Okay. So the latest version of a map reduce is ca called as YARN. Okay. So it is also called as map reduce 2.0. Okay. What does it do means it provides high level APIs with respect to Java, Scala, Python, and also R programming and also has an optimized engine that supports uh, that supports general execution graphs okay so the main advantage of this particular yarn or the map reduce 2.0 is it uh, it can perform 100 times faster uh, operation or faster processing or it has got 100 times faster capacity to work in memory okay so which allows the keeping large working data sets in the memory between the jobs. Okay. So jobs here is considered as a small task given to a particular system to do. Okay. Or the device to do. Okay. So this helps in reducing the latency. Okay. Not only that, it also supports that stream processing. Now let's see what is that stream processing. See stream processing is a computer programming paradigm equal to data flow programming okay or reactive programming okay 
So what these do means they allow some applications to more easily exploit a limited form of parallel processing. Okay, so they helps in various applications to make an uh, a limited form with respect to the parallel kind of processing. Now here comes the point of Flink. Now what is this Flink? Flink is a streaming data flow. Okay, so it's a streaming data flow engine that provides data distribution, communication, and also it looks after the fault tolerance. Okay, fault tolerance. Okay, so the main advantage of this particular Flink is it has no latency at all. All the data is streamed in real time row by row. Okay, on that particular point of time. Okay, so this particular data flow engine runs on the YARN or the uh, map reduce 2.0. Okay, and it also works on this particular extended version of map reduce as I've already said 2.0. Okay, so next important one is machine learning which is very much famous okay so machine learning is the field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed okay so it helps as the name indicate it helps the machine to learn on its own or it helps the computers to learn on its own without providing any particular programming okay or extra programming okay so it is especially useful for the context of iot okay some properties of data can be collected and based on that the collected data you can uh, discover some other uh, points or the properties automatically okay so here we may use uh, apache spark okay so this particular tool comes with the own machine learning libraries okay so this particular machine learning library which comes in the or integrated in the apache spark is called as mlib okay so it consists of this particular uh, tool consists of common learning algorithms and utilities okay so they include classification regression clustering collaborative filtering dimensionality re reduction and many more okay so these particular algorithms are mainly grouped in three domains one is classification second one is association and third one is clustering okay so in order to choose an or algorithm different parameters should be considered okay so those parameters can be scalability robustness transparency and proportionality okay so uh, here uh, we take an uh, analytical or analytic platform like nine okay k n i m e nine okay it's an analytic platform that allows the user to process that particular data okay that too in a graphical interface so graphical interface is nothing but the it's an user in, uh, friendly interface right okay so it allows training the models and evolution of different machine learning algorithm rapidly with respect to graphical representation okay so Suppose if the workflow is ready, okay, or already deployed on the Hadoop or uh, Manout, okay, a machine learning library can be used. Spark, as I've already said, the Spark tool has already has its own machine learning library called Mlib. See, H2O is another software which is also dedicated to the machine learning, okay, which can be again deployed uh, on Hadoop or the Spark, okay? So the specialty of this is, it has an easy to use web interface and it also have uh, can do possible combinations or po combining of big data analytics, okay, easily with respect to machine learning algorithms in order to train the models, okay? So all these things, so all these things, Okay, are the various technologies in order to uh, build or uh, process this particular IoT analytics platform. There are many more which can uh, be used for this particular IoT analytic platform. Okay, next comes the data visualization. Data visualization is one of the important thing in the IoT analytics. Okay, 
So there are some uh, uh, dashboards like Freeboard. Okay, so Freeboard is nothing but it offers a simple dashboard which which will be having a several set of widgets widgets means in the phone we see right it's in a weather monitoring okay or uh, a time calendar or something like that those kind of widgets also uh, with respect to iot okay freeboard offers them okay to display the data okay not only that there is some various firmware connectors okay and we also have a tableau public okay which is a free service so uh, it is this particular uh, service helps the uh, helps the data to be published on the web as well okay and uh, another open source analytics is the kibana okay kibana is one of the open source analytics and also it is visualization platform designed to work with the elastic search so what this this kibana source analytic do means it allows searching viewing interacting with the data stored okay so many things are possible with this respect to open source uh, platform like Kibana. Okay, so mostly, mostly advanced uh, data analysis and visualization of data is carried out in any kind of algorithm or the data sets like an, uh, and this data will be shown in the form of charts, tables, and maps and on whatnot. Okay, so if you see the overall uh, block diagram, we have business case evaluation from there it goes to the data identification from there it goes to the data acquisition and filtering again it goes to the uh, uh, stage of data extraction from there it goes to the data validation from there once the validation has been done it goes to the data representation from there it goes to the data analysis data visualization at last we will be utilizing that particular results okay in from all these things data acquisition is one of the main thing we need to consider with respect to iot okay so data acquisition in short we can consider it as it is uh, acquisition is nothing but the data collection okay so this data collection can be done using uh, wired or wireless and also from various sensors okay with respect to iot so in order to deployment of iot device okay so we have a large scale of iot devices for short distance communications as well as long distance communication gsm gprs 3g network 4g network okay a uh, low low power devices short range radios okay and many more technologies are integrated into this particular iot uh, setups or iot applications in order to collect this particular data okay we also have low power uh, modules okay all these technologies, electronic technologies are integrated into a IoT, which helps in data collection, or you can simply call it as data acquisition. Okay. So coming to the architecture and deployment. So here with respect to the IoT, with respect to the market, the deployment of uh, uh, both uh, LP WAN, low power wireless area networks. Okay. So it can be both operator based or privately owned scenario. It can be like in surveillance systems or anything else. Okay. So many communications and many deployments are possible. And most of the IOT applications, okay, are gateway centric approach. Like in, uh, there will be in uh, several nodes of IOT systems. Also, all those systems are connected to an uh, Wi-Fi router. Okay. From Wi-Fi router, it will be, uh, transmitted or uh, data is uh, transferred through a particular app or an API through which the monitoring can be done. To give a best example, suppose there are multiple cameras, okay, Wi-Fi cameras. All these Wi-Fi camera nodes are connected using a single modem or a Wi-Fi router, okay. From this Wi-Fi router, we can monitor through a particular API or an app, okay. This is how uh, an architecture and deployment of this thing will be done okay so this is also what they have shown here they are using some servers okay they are using some wireless technology like 3g 4g lte wi-fi okay and also we have a wireless uh, communication systems like lora and all those things and we also have a privately based approach like modems wi-fi routers and iot stations and all those things operator based means like uh, 3g 4g like 
And so there will be an operator like Airtel, Geo, or something like that. They will be providing services in order to connect with this particular IoT platforms. Okay. So this is how the architecture and deployment with respect to IoT applications is done.